Today we're talking about capturing correct skin tones and explaining how aperture, shutter speed, and f-stops work. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And today we've got a great Q&A session. We got questions all over the web and we're gonna be answering them. Last week we asked you what were your printing solutions? And here's what you said. For printing, I use and recommend Adorama Pix. They have a bunch of different finishes and photos and print on different media as well. For smaller sizes, I use Costco. I download their printer profile and they do a decent job. For larger prints and non-paper products like metal or canvas, I've used Adorama and I'm really pleased with the results. As a former worker in a photography store, I've got two tips for printing. Ask the person who prints about the printer's DPI. Most printers print in either 300 or 600 DPI, and it's important to set your image DPI to the printers. Most printers print with auto correction mode on. Sometimes the result is fine, but it usually makes the images much more saturated and adds contrast. So it's better to ask them to print without auto correction, and you're more likely to get the results you want. Thanks, that was super helpful. If you have a question for me and the Florin team, simply leave it in a comment right down below. We'll make a video just like this. And if I choose to answer your question, you get a free month of Florin Pro. That's every single Pro tutorial we've ever created. Lightroom presets, Photoshop actions, Photoshop brushes. It's an incredible bargain and it's yours free. All you gotta do is submit your question right down below. We got a great week for you. Let's go ahead and jump into our questions. I'll sometimes hear a photographer refer to an f-stop as either fast or slow. I don't get it. What does it mean to measure an aperture in speed? So to clear things up, let's start with a couple of definitions. Aperture has to do with the size of the hole that's inside of your lens. You can have a large hole, what's gonna let in a lot of light, or a small hole, which is gonna let in a little bit of light. An f-stop, or commonly known as just a stop, is simply a measurement of light. So one stop is equal to double the amount of light. If you go two stops, you're gonna double it and then double it again. So it'd be four times as much light. Going back down the other way, if you had two stops less light, it would mean you had four times less light than your original measurement. Now, referring to an aperture as either fast or slow has nothing to do with the aperture itself. It actually has to do with the shutter speed that's correlated to the aperture. For instance, if you're using a large aperture, okay, like an f1.4 or an f2.0 that's gonna let in a lot of light, then that allows you to use a faster shutter speed because you get a lot of light from your aperture, so you can use a faster shutter speed which lets in less light with your shutter speed. If you have a smaller or a slower aperture like an f8 or f11, it's not gonna let enough light in, meaning you have to use a slower shutter speed to get the same exposure. So again, the faster slow rating, that has nothing to do with the aperture itself. It has to do with how much time your shutter has to be open to get that exposure. More light from your aperture means you can have less time on your shutter speed. Less light from your aperture means you need more time on your shutter speed. What are some options for replicating and imitating rain in Photoshop? We actually got a really easy answer for you. We have a free rain brush on florin.com. Just follow the link on your screen or in the description right down below. You can simply download this brush and then paint rain on any of your photos. It's incredibly simple, takes just a couple of seconds and it's free. Sick. Brah. Recently, I photographed a model against a black background. Due to some strobes and lights, things leaked into the background, and when I exported the image and viewed it on my phone, I just saw patches in the background. So how do you get a pure black background? So this is actually a pretty common problem. Getting a pure white or a pure black background can actually be pretty tough. So. Here's how you do it. You create a solid color fill layer and make sure it's filling with complete black. Go ahead and put that on the bottom. Basically, you just wanna use a layer mask to cut your subject out from that background. So what you're going to be seeing underneath your subject is the pure black solid fill layer. Now, you don't have to be incredibly accurate with your cutout. My suggestion is to do a relatively loose cutout and then create a levels adjustment layer, clip it to your subject, pop your black levels up a little bit and then line your subject around which is going to make the pretty dark areas right around your subject to really dark, and then everywhere else will be completely black. Can you give some tips on how to remove chromatic aberration? So to start with, what is chromatic aberration? Basically, it's just a little bit of light bending around inside of your camera and your lens, and it has to do with the coatings that's on the glass. What you see in your image is you'll have an object, and on one side, you'll have a thin layer of green, and on the other side, you'll have a thin layer of magenta. This is called chromatic aberration. You tend to see this on a less expensive lens or when you're shooting with a wide open aperture. So there are some tools built into both Photoshop and Lightroom to 
help you fix chromatic aberration. In Lightroom, go to your Develop tab and then go down to Lens Corrections. Click on Color and you'll see a button that says Remove Chromatic Aberration. Go ahead and click on that. You can adjust your sliders and you'll be removing chromatic aberration. In Photoshop, you can get to this exact same menu. Just go to Filter and down to Camera Raw. Click on your Lens Corrections and click on Remove Chromatic Aberration. Now this should get you most or all of the way there. If you still need a little bit of help, you can use a hue saturation adjustment layer. Simply target the color you want to remove and then adjust your hue until you don't see it anymore. Hey Aaron, what does the tattoo on your right arm say? It says, we are what we pretend to be. And it's the first half of a quote by Kurt Vonnegut. The second half is, so we must be careful who we pretend to be. Just a little reminder myself to uh, make sure to put my best foot forward. By the way, this is my best foot. <laughs> I don't need you, lefty. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Karma's gonna... <laughs> I need both of you! Can you explain the reason for using a green backdrop? And is it really necessary to get a cleaner background swap in Photoshop? So the whole idea with using a green backdrop or a blue backdrop, as you might've heard in video terms, a green screen or a blue screen, the idea is that people don't really have a lot of green or blue in their skin. So if you need to select out a color and remove a person from a background, green or blue are really good colors because you can select out that green and be pretty confident that it's not going to select your subject's skin. Green screen is commonly used in video because you can't cut out every single frame. That would take forever. So you basically have to choose a color and say, hey, make this color not show up. Now with photography, things are a little bit different and you don't have to shoot with a green screen or a blue screen to cut someone out of their backdrop accurately. My big suggestion when you're cutting someone out of the backdrop is first, know what backdrop you're going to be putting a person into. For instance, if they're gonna go into like an Arctic snow scene that's very light colored, I highly recommend photographing on a white background. If you're gonna be placing someone into a night scene, I highly recommend photographing on a dark background. Basically, the closer you can match your background in the studio to where they're gonna wind up in the composite, the more realistic that's going to be. Even if you do a good job cutting your subject out, you might see a thin line of white or a thin line of black right around your subject, especially when it comes to things like hair. Now, if you can just simply match that color in the studio to what's going on in your background, and you got a much better chance of your composite looking realistic. Last question. I'm struggling with correcting skin colors when they appear too gray or too yellow. I've watched a bunch of tutorials. What's your go-to process for ensuring skin colors are accurate? So when it comes to representing accurate skin color, the most important thing you can do is use a gray card during a photo shoot. Actually, let me just go get one. A gray card, just like this one here, we shoot uh, video and photography here at our studio. So we have this little clipper here, but we just taped a gray card onto this. So if you hold this up next to your subject and take a picture of your subject, then you can use your little eyedropper in Lightroom to click on this gray, which is like certified by the way. You can buy these on whatever website. We'll link to it right down below. They're not very expensive, but basically they're pure gray. So you can sample those and it's going to make sure that your white balance is correct. Then your skin tones are going to be spot on as well. Now for this to work, you have to shoot in raw. It will not work the same if you're shooting in JPEG. During your photo shoot, put one of these gray cards up right near your subject's face. Just take one picture. You don't have it for the entire photo shoot. Sample that, make sure you get the proper white balance and then sync the rest of the photos from that photo shoot. Now, when it comes to getting accurate skin color in post-production like Lightroom or Photoshop, this is unfortunately completely subjective because you have a huge range of people's skin colors. You have people with light skin and dark skin, everything in between. So really the only way you can know if it's right or wrong is if you photographed it correctly using the proper white balance. All right, guys, that's it for this week. We got this great question. Do you offer courses for graphic designers? And as of now, we actually don't offer courses for graphic designers, which makes me like, whoa, we need to start offering courses for graphic designers. So the question this week is what type of other courses do you wanna see offered from Flurm? Whatever you guys think we should teach, we're down. So let us know in a comment right down below. What do you think we should be teaching that we're not currently teaching here at Flurm. Thank you so much to everyone who entered your question. If you got a question for me and the Flurm team, simply leave it in a comment right down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if we choose your question, you're going to win a free month of Flurm Pro. It's an incredible fun value. You get to learn all kinds of retouching, compositing, special effects tutorials, Photoshop brushes, Lightroom presets, all kinds of really great stuff included in your membership. And you get it for free. So just submit your question right down below. Thanks so much, guys. I'll Flurm you later. Bye, everyone. I had a delicious smoothie today. Yeah. Kale, bunch of spinach. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. That's what's making my brain.
Super, super actually working right now. <laughs>